Hey everybody, welcome in today. Welcome on in to My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. Today I'm going to be showing you how to flip an everyday glass canning jar into a beautiful little primitive style lamp that you can use in your everyday home decor. So if you're like me, many of you are probably still in Christmas mode. <laughs> if you're watching this while we are currently live, you probably still have Christmas decorations up. Now, I mean, I know some of you are kind of quick on the spot and you get those Christmas decorations down, but not me. <laughs> I like to enjoy them as long as I can. So what I do is I slowly kind of work my way into some everyday decor. And what I usually like to do is take some of my Christmas projects, crafts, or DIYs that I have shown you guys how to make and flip them into something that you can use every day, which is kind of similar to what we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to be giving you some of the same ideas that we've done before, only we're going to be doing it for some everyday decor. So I'm not quite ready to switch out all of my Christmas and winter decor yet, but um, we're just going to do something to kind of get us ahead of the game and get us ready for spring. Uh, although this is not spring related, this is something that you can use every day. Good morning, Miss Jennifer, Miss Sue. Hello, hello, hi, Miss Sparky. How are you, Robin? Thank you all so much for being in here. I was a few minutes late. I'm telling you, I'm out of practice. <laughs> I have not been live in, seems like, forever. I hope, by the way, I hope all of you had a wonderful and blessed Christmas. And uh, while we're thinking about it, and I wish you a happy new year as well, coming up this weekend. So, um, but yeah, I've been out of practice, kind of been uh, taking some time off just to kind of enjoy some downtime with family. And uh, it's been nice. It's been nice to kind of sit back and relax. Although the Christmas season was not it, it was busy, 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 go, go, go. But a few days after, I have taken some time to relax. So, hello, Miss Gail. All of y'all are hopping in here. I'm so excited. Hey, Miss Debbie, how are you? Bridget and Sue. Yes, y'all caught me live. If you are here right now watching me live, I so appreciate you being here. So, I've kind of been looking for some inspiration and um, some ideas for transitioning out of the Christmas holiday season decor type things. Um, I still... I still decorate for winter probably all the way up through the end of February. Um, and sometimes up until like the beginning of March is when I kind of pull out my spring decor. So I'm not going to pull out all of my what some people might call Christmassy decor, but um, I'm going to leave most of mine that will that will work for the winter up and all the way through February. So I don't know if y'all are like me, which that means I'm still leaving all my greens out. I'm still leaving all of my uh, snowmen out, which I haven't pulled a lot of my snowmen out yet. And I like to kind of do that when I pull down my Christmas decor. I kind of like to pull out some new things, my snowman kind of uh, decor, because it makes me feel like my home's not so bare. I don't know about you guys, but when you pull down your Christmas decor, sometimes it's depressing. <laughs> Hello, Miss Monique. You are. I'm so excited you're here. Good morning, Miss Victoria. Uh, so good to see you. Yes, thank you so much. So I've kind of been looking around for inspiration, like I said, and I have seen, um, and I didn't flip my camera, um, I have seen this image, and I, I found this image a while back, and I thought, I, I knew when I saw it, I really liked it, and I thought, I'm going to do something with that, um, you know, when the time comes, but I think today is when we're going to do it. But take a look at this picture. This is an image. Uh, it's from a designer on Etsy. I can share the link with you later, um, but it's so pretty. It's just simple. It's uh, primitive, rustic -y looking, and it's, it's just my style, and it's something that can work for every day. So what I've had um, the notion to do, I've kind of been tossing around all kinds of ideas this morning, you guys, um, with this image. I thought about it first. I have this, um, you all have seen me grubby up these jars before. I did a fall grubby jar and had it decorated at the top. Um, but I thought to myself when I did this one, this one was, this was pumpkin preserves. Um, I thought, well, on the back, I need to do an everyday scene, you know, something that every day, so I can just flip this around in the fall, and then when it falls over, I can flip it around and have an everyday photo or image or something on that side. So that's a thought. We could finish up this half of the grubby jar and use this image and make a real pretty uh, lamp inside lit jar. Now, this is a big jar. This is a vintage jar, by the way. I love that wooden handle. Don't y'all love that? Isn't that pretty? Or the other thought... And you all can kind of help me decide here. I think I have everything out here that we could do either one. So you guys were with me 
I don't know. I can't pull this out. But this little Christmas uh, jar, this little punch tin Christmas jar lantern, we did that out of a pickle jar. Did I save a pickle jar around here? I had one over here a second ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> just within arm's reach over here. We took an, just an old pickle jar we've washed and rinsed in and everything cleaned out. And we transformed that, this little jar into this little punch tin lamp. So I thought, well, this is a Christmas version. I'm going to need to transition it into something every day. So that's a thought. So I printed two different sizes of the labels. I printed a small one. I thought, well, we could do that on this jar and make an everyday sweet little lamp. All we would have to do is just transition the lampshade over to this. That's a thought. Okay. The other thought is to use just a regular size canning jar and make a little taller lamp. Um, with a, a different dressing on the top, if you will. Okay, we will still use this uh, shade, only it'll be on this jar and it'll be a little bit taller version. And I'm not seeing my comments. My comments stopped when I switched my camera. Hey, Miss Leanne from Dita's Crafts and Creations. How are you? Hello, Miss Sue. So you all tell me what you think you'd like to see. We've got finish the grubby jar. We would turn this into a lantern of some sort. They're all three going to be lantern options. Lantern slash lamp. Pickle jar, small lamp, or a taller canning jar lamp. You all chime in and let me know. <laughs> I know. I love this image too. I just think it's so sweet. And this would be so cute to have it printed and even framed. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to probably use this in several different things. Um, but it says... Look, my, I'm going to get tongue-tied. She seeks wool and flax and works willing, willingly with her hands. Proverbs 1, 3. Make sure I read that right. I think that's what it's kind of faint at the bottom, the scripture reading right there at the bottom. But I just think that's so simple and so sweet. And that can carry you all year long. Um, let's see. Is anybody canning jar lamp, Miss Judy says? Um, it's, it, it would be a, something a little bit different that we haven't done. And I'm going to give it, if we do this one, I'm going to give it a little bit different um, of a topper. We are still going to use that lampshade, but if we do the canning jar lamp, sorry about that. I hope I'm not shaking the camera too much. I pulled on my cord. I'm going to use one of these little silicone candles at the top. We're going to dress it up like so and use that lampshade on the top. So it would be a taller version of the lamp. So you can see this is the pickle jar size and this is the regular jar. It, this would be much taller. Okay. Um, so... Give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts. Finish the grubby one. Tall mason jar. Okay, we got two pickle or two mason jars, one pickle jar, and one grubby jar. Um, let's see. And whatever we don't do today, we'll still we'll still do um, we'll still do that another time. Uh, you're right. It's Proverbs thirty one thirteen. Gosh, it's so faint. I thought for sure. There it is at the bottom. You can see that. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Miss Christina from the Rest Covered Cottage. Okay, I think most of you are kind of wanting to see this kidding jar idea because it might be something a little bit different. So we've got still got these in limbo um, that we'll do another day. So now, since, uh, would you all believe that I did not bring any um, coffee grunge to the table today? <laughs> I, I meant to get some made up. I just I just ran out of time, you guys. That's all there is to it. I just simply ran out of time. I mean, when I, I haven't been live in so long, I'm going to take this smaller image, and since I don't have any of my coffee grunge to kind of wet it to do a feather tear, we're going to improvise here, okay? Um, I've just been so out of sorts. Everything's been packed away and tucked away, and I thought, didn't think about it until this morning. I thought, oh, it's no big deal. I'll get everything ready. <laughs> I was huffing and puffing, and y'all, I can't even find my makeup bag. <laughs> so I'm like a, a little less facially dressed than normal. Um, and um, yeah, just things are just out of sorts. I didn't even have any coffee grunge made up. And I was hoping that I would get a chance to make some up before I started the live, but that didn't happen. So we're folding it, and then we're just carefully tearing um, around that folded area to kind of get that same feathered look. Now, the good thing about this is this image, it already has that kind of vintagey look to it, so we don't have to do a whole lot of grunging to it anyway. Um, 
So, but I can always kind of go back over it later with a little bit of a coffee grunge and, and if I need to and um, give it a little bit more character. But I'm telling you, I was huffing, puffing. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late. <laughs> so I was like, the show must roll on. Good morning. Thank you, Miss Deborah, for sprinkling us out. I so appreciate it. I hope you guys had an amazing holiday at Christmas. And um, I've been missing our, our crafting and creating time around here. It kind of gives me an outlet to kind of let go of some stress and just kind of have some time where I can kind of do something that you kind of enjoy um you know because sometimes I know us as moms or grandmothers or you know just um or even just a motherly figure you know we get so caught up in doing 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 and getting things perfect or getting things ready that whew, after the holidays first you're just exhausted and then it's like huh, I didn't get time to enjoy it because I was going 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 all the time oh my gosh you know what else I forgot I forgot a little sponge brush. You guys, I'm gonna have to go grab a little sponge brush. Hang tight. <laughs> Hang tight. I've got one right over here. Okay. All of my stuff, when you're kind of out of sync and out of rhythm, you know, stuff gets scattered and you don't have things in the regular places and that's what's happened. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm thinking about doing, let me show you. You all know that I love using um, like used tea bags, okay? That's what I'm going to do to cover this jar because look how well the color tones work with the color tones of this print. They blend so pretty together. So we're going to Mod Podge this onto the jar. Um, and then, actually, we're going to Mod Podge the 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 tea bags on first. Now these have been, these are used tea bags. My friend Gretchen from Made on the Loop sent me some because uh, she knows I love using these. Just like decoupage paper or napkins, you know, you can decoupage these onto anything. Uh, and they're so durable yet thin that they allow the light to shine through. So that's why I like using these a lot on my little jar lamps. So that's why I like to use these. Now these obviously aren't gonna be as big as our jar. So um, actually they're pretty darn close. So they have been used. She has used these tea bags to make tea and then you uh, allow them to dry. You unfold them and of course dump out the tea grounds, but it leaves behind um, that tea stained patina that we love anyway. Oh my gosh, those are going to be perfect. I couldn't have planned that any better if I had tried. So look how much of a perfect fit that is. <laughs> it fit on that jar. And um, so we really don't have to have the coffee grunge for this. Now you can definitely add more of the coffee grunge look if you want to. Uh, and I may after I'm finished. It just kind of depends on after it dries, I'll give it a look over and see what I think. But I am going to take these used tea bags you guys don't go out and buy new stuff to to create and craft with if you don't have to if you don't have the means to you can totally take things from your everyday life and flip them into something so cute okay now of course you might have to get a few little things but nothing you know nothing huge you can definitely use some of the supplies that you have at your fingertips that if you just kind of think outside of the box. So we didn't have to buy any napkins um, or any kind of decoupage paper or anything like that. We are using tea bags <laughs> and repurposing a jar. Now I'm using a canning jar for this project, but you guys saw, I mean, just like this, you can use a pickle jar, okay? You can use a jelly jar. I mean, there's tons of things that come in jars these days that we can repurpose and reuse. So I encourage you to do that. Um, I have jars out my ears, you guys. So I hope, <laughs> I hope you're not going to get tired of jar projects because we're going to keep rolling them out of here. Hey, Miss Debbie from Blissful Crafts and Designs. How are you? Hey, Miss Lisa Brown. How are you from Brown Eyed Girls Crafting? Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, you guys. Um, so we're, I am going to cover this entire jar. Now, 
I, I could just put my, my print down and then, and then take these tea bags around it. Um, but these tea bags are so thin, the light's going to shine through them even with my print on top. So I'm not too worried about it. I just love the look of the, that um, these tea bags give anyway. And they really do. They go on pretty flat. Now, I am kind of cr curving them around, um, you know, the curve at the top of the jar and around the bottom. And it gives you a little wrapped effect. See that? Love that. They almost can look like, um, they almost look like some sort of like muslin material or fabric because they're durability. They, they just have a little bit of a, they're thin, but yet they're, they feel as if they would be thick. I know that sounds so weird, but um, it's true. <laughs> I'm going to cut this one down. This will be the back of my jar. Now this jar has a little bit of like a raised um, design on it. So that's going to probably be the back of my jar. Um, so if you have a jar that doesn't have any, you know, raised uh, designs on it, I would encourage you to, to use one of those. I have some. I, once again, I just ran out of time looking this morning and had to go with what I had in, um, you know, quick and easy access this morning. So that's why we're going with this one today. But... Um, these are cute little jar lamps that you can set in a laundry room, in a bathroom, in the kitchen. I mean, any little place that you like a little bit of ambient lighting. I'm trying to get that little sponge brush to where it'll sit without falling out. Okay, so I've just taken those tea bags and wrapped the outside of my jar. Easy peasy, right? Good morning, Kathleen and Alma. Hello. Hey, Karen. How are you? And Joyce, thank you all for hopping on this morning. So let's see, which side is my race? Even when I've covered it, it's kind of hard to see that raised design anyway. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this little printable design. Good morning, Diana. I have, I, I too have more mason jars than, <laughs> okay, as long as I don't get tired of the mason jar or the jar projects, I'll keep them coming, you guys. <laughs> no problem there. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, next month in January, which is just a few days away, we'll be starting a new month, you guys. Doesn't that sound crazy? Um, I'm going to put some Mod Podge on the back of this little printed design that I showed you guys. And then we're going to stick it to our jar. Um, I really did not prepare my work table much today. Huh. But um, coming up in January, we are having a special series here on my page my sweet home living um it's going to be all about jelly cupboard a jelly cupboard <laughs> it is a primitive jelly cupboard uh series and so i'm going to give you lots of fun ideas i even have an inspiration piece that i can't wait to um dust off <laughs> and show you guys that I'm going to be using um, for my projects. Can't wait. I can't wait, you guys. It's going to be so much fun. And it's going to be something that um, I think you'll really find different and enjoyable. Uh, we are going to be using lots of jars for the, for the uh, series. So um, get those jars. Save those jars. If, if you don't use jars a whole lot, ask your neighbor. <laughs> ask your family members to be saving some jars for you because um, we're going to be using some jars in that project and I'm going to we're going to come up with a whole little display for that I have um, I'm hoping I have yet to pull in my little inspiration piece into the house yet so I'm thinking though you all can't see this this little area over here <laughs> in this room that I'm in is another display area sort of similar to what I have behind me but that is the area that I'm going to, once I pull down my Christmas um, decorations over there on that area, that is the area we are going to be working in. I'm going to be showing you that's going to be our backdrop for the whole series. And we're really going to kind of set that whole scene up as a jelly cupboard slash general store-ish scene, table scene. I can't wait for this, this series, you guys. It's going to be so much fun. Um, you know, ideas that you can use similar to what I've shown you in the past. So it's not going to be anything totally um, 
you know, totally hard or, or ex you know, not hard to access, you know, supplies to get or whatever. But all I'm doing is trying to get this little, this, um, this paper. I've printed this on my printer on just regular copy paper, and I'm just making sure that I get it down really good around the edges. That Mod Podge is taking a little bit to kind of soak into that paper and make it soft but once it gets that paper soft then I'm just taking my fingers and rubbing it around the edge of that label okay that's gonna be so pretty all right I'm not yes I am <laughs> I was gonna say I'm not gonna Mod Podge over it too much but I am I am gonna give it go ahead and give it a little bit of layer um, of a mo real thin layer of Mod Podge over that um, just so that the whole surface kind of has a um, the same finish to it the same this Mod Podge is not shiny but it can have a slight sheen if the light hits it just right um, but that'll also give it a little bit of a protectant layer so if you display this in your kitchen um, or something like that and you know anything splatters on it it's protected you can wipe it right off if you have that layer of Mod Podge over top okay all right now let's finish this the topping on this up um so oh i gotta get that mod podge off of my fingers <laughs> okay so what i'm doing on the top of this jar you guys actually on the inside of this jar real quick we are going to put in one of these little um this is just the the quickest little light strip i had you would want to go with a really small um strand of lights you guys I would tell you look at Hobby Lobby they usually have little strands of like 10 or 15 those are pretty good to use I can't hardly find them anywhere else not even online um, the little teeny lights I can order those on Amazon but they're a little bit more expensive and you know sometimes it, it depends on if I'm gonna see the lights or whatnot sometimes I do prefer those but for this project you can just use some regular sized uh, what they would call Christmas lights okay so let's see what do I need to I'm just gonna is that <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I don't unplug our light here and I want to unplug the light our, our uh, big lights here because we'd be in the dark okay so that that Mod Podge is not quite I uh, unplugged the, the dryer so now on camera you guys it shines it shows up there we go if I can get that camera to just now you're gonna have a little bit of a glow okay so now let me unplug this for a moment because that's really bright <laughs> now what i'm going to do for the top of this normally if this was going to be visible i would grub it okay and by grubbing it hmm i don't have a little grubby jar handy um i'm trying to see i had one <laughs> i don't know where it went but by grabbing it, I cover it with Mod Podge, sprinkle it with uh, instant coffee and cinnamon, and let it kind of melt into it and kind of let it dry, and it dries hard. Sort of like this, it's exactly the same texture that I showed you uh, guys on this jar in the beginning as one of our project choices. It gives this lid a little bit of a rust, rusty effect, right? Well, for this, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to hide this and it's not really going to be seen. I do need a little... Um, a, a ring okay a jar ring because this candle this little I think this is a three and a half inch candle lamp you can find these on Amazon pretty easy uh, I'm going to glue that on the top of this ring it has enough room around the rim uh, that it will fit right in there so here's what I can do I can take this light strand right through this okay tighten that down now that's going to give me um the substance to where i can glue this down now is it going to be a perfect fit no because i have that string coming out the back of my jar right here the, the string lights inside the jar are totally optional you don't have to use those i like to have both options <laughs> i like to have an inside glow as well as a little lampshade at the top so you guys take this project idea and work it in your own way okay there's no right or wrong way to do it you guys know how that goes we're just here to give you guys ideas um and of course i forgot to grab my glue sticks today 
uh, out of my drawer. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue um, around this rim. Now, if you want this to be something that is permanent, you can use a more permanent glue, but just keep in mind that your light string is running through there. So you would probably have to cut your string if you ever wanted to remove that if you use permanent glue. Okay. Um, I'm just going to give that a hold for a second. Now I'm going to cover this up at the top with some cheesecloth. Okay. So that's what I was saying earlier. I'm not too worried about this being shiny and uh, real bright silver right now because I'm going to cover it. I'm going to cover it with some cheesecloth. So, um, let me see. I've got some cheesecloth right in here. Let's see if we've got enough to make it work. If not, I've got some more over here on the side. Um, I just kind of like to drape it. Um, let's see. I can drape it like, I can tie it around like that. Or what I've done in the past, which I really like the look of, is I like to cut a hole in the center of it and just drape it down. Okay, which I think is what I'm going to do right now. I love this cheesecloth, you guys. I use it for so much stuff. So I'm going to take it and drape it down over the top. Now, I can, I can bring it on down, which I kind of like that little lip of that little candle. I like to see that part. And I even like the little black base of the little candle lamp. So... I can just kind of keep pulling, keep stretching that hole that we cut until it gets down over that. And we'll let it go down. And as long as it covers the silver of that, that um, ring, that jar ring, we're good. So like that right there, okay? I like that. So now I'm just gonna cut off the extra. I don't ever have to worry about cutting this like too much because if I if I get a straight line what I do is I just take it and I just kind of stretch it it kind of has some give to it so see how this has like that straight edge right there I just take it and, and take my fingers and pull out some of those little threads and fibers and it stretches it and makes it look like it's you know <laughs> good and worn <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do now I've got it a little long on this side but we'll see we won't we'll wait to cut that until we're completely finished all right now, I might need to put a little bit of glue down there to kind of tighten it, to keep it in place. I'm not sure. But what I like to do around the top of these jars, I'm looking to see kind of what colors we have. I have some uh, material that I like to kind of tear. We have colors. We have browns. We have blacks. I was trying to look to see if there's any blues in that. I don't see any blue. Okay, we're going to fix this up here, so don't, don't fret over that too much yet. It's going to still evolve. <laughs> Let me cut a little bit more of that off because that it's going to bug me too. It's going to bug me too. Okay, so now what I'll do, I think I'm going to use some of this black homespun. I do have some uh, Sweet Annie that I think would really be cute on this little lamp. I don't know if we can find a place to put it on here or not, but this is just strips of... Um, homespun fabric you guys homespun is just uh it's a real simple fabric where the coloring is the same on both sides there's no right or wrong side to the fabric you know how like sometimes when you buy fabric um there can be a faded side and then a really vivid side to the color or the design of it right well homespun is the same on both sides so no matter what side you see it from it looks the same. Now, homespun comes in all kinds of different designs, like checks and plaids and stripes, in all kinds of different, um, I, I would say like vintagey, earthy type colors. So you might see reds and greens or mustards, um, burgundies, and things like that. But the colors aren't super bold. If they are, which sometimes they can be, I like to coffee grunge them, kind of soak them in some coffee grunge, and it kind of uh, deepens the colors, makes them look more country and rustic to me, I think. And um, so that's what I like doing with them. Now I cut those two short. Dag on it. <laughs> Dag on it. So now while I'm tying this down, let me go ahead and pull out this little lampshade dump back here because we're going to have to use this little lamp. Some, some accessories on this just to kind of speed the process. 
this little shade you guys i love this shade i don't know if it's still on sale it used to be on sale on amazon if you want the link to this i can share um i can share the link with you it was 15 dollars. now this is a heavy duty substantial like punched tin lantern a lamp shade okay but it's small i think it's a two inch by four inch by six inch okay two by four by six i believe that's correct and on the inside do you see that little clip that's a little light bulb clip now the light bulb that i have on this little lamp right here it's it would work okay um but i like to have it a little bit taller to kind of hold it i don't know this just grips a taller light bulb better okay but you want it still to be a low watt light bulb i think these little light bulbs are like four watts or seven watts so they don't use you know they don't get super hot okay so let me put this on here and kind of see what we're going to see here um now sometimes you know since your light bulb is can be kind of small sometimes your lampshade wants to kind of tilt or do a little funny game with you um, is if sometimes if I just spin it a certain direction, it'll lay on my light bulb perfect and it stays right there. So I kind of wanted to see um, how much of this this top of this jar that I can really see. So let me hold it up. Um, you know, better yet, let's kind of plug this in. So I, when I hold it up, you can kind of get an idea of what we're working with. And that'll give us a better idea of how we want to embellish the top of that jar. Um, because we'll be able to see how much is actually visible with that shade on okay all right so where's our plug-in go here we got cords everywhere okay so i'm gonna i don't need, i'm gonna unplug our hot glue thing so i don't think i'll need that right now so let me plug in this little lamp okay ha huh. Okay, now I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see. Um, now my Mod Podge still is a little tacky, so I'm going to have to be careful uh, picking the jar up. But let me get my cords out the back. All right, so it is going to be visible. This part up here is going to be visible. I'm trying to give you like a real eye level view. Now this is not that bright, so let me get that close again to you and you can see it's a much softer glow than it appears. <laughs> On camera, it wants to like, whew, uh, really brighten it up. So let me unplug that one. All right, there you go. So um, you are going to see a little bit more of that at the top than what I would have thought, honestly. So what I'm going to do, let's take this off. <laughs> We've got the little lamp bulb. I'm going to unscrew that for a second because that's going to blind me. I'm going to take a strip of this cheesecloth, and what I'm going to do is I think I'm gonna use this to kind of tie down this cheesecloth that's at the top first. And what this will also do is it will also uh, help hold those cords down in the back. So see in the back where these cords are gonna come out the back, I'm gonna secure that down and tie this down really tight. So it helps to keep our cheesecloth in place as well as our cords in place and um, it'll give us a little bit extra a little bit of extra foo-foo at the top here okay i'm sorry i'm going to turn this around so i can see it good from my angle for just a minute excuse me okay i'm not not going to tie that in a bow i'm just going to tie it in a knot and just kind of let it hang okay now so that's what we have so far i want to add some little black accents and then we are we're going to add some sweet annie to this too uh, sweet annie if you guys have never used it i usually find mine from um some sellers um on etsy but I, we have completely i think depleted their stash <laughs> for the season um but it is just a dried herb. It's a dried natural that has a real primitive, uh, natural, earthy smell that's used in a lot of primitive style projects, okay? So if you haven't seen me use that before, I'll show you that here in just a minute. Um, I wanna get a couple of different little uh, 
ties on here. And I like to tie these little strands all individually because if I tie them all at one time, I get this huge chunky knot that I'm not a fan of. So it gives this like big chunky, chunky knot at the top and I don't like it big and bulky. All right, so let's tie that down. And I think just having that kind of hang down on the side is really cute and simple. There you go, there's a better look. So I've just kind of let those threads, look at that, I love that little thread that just kind of dangles and you can kind of pull them out. If you just take the edge of that cheesecloth and just pull, it, that's what you get. And I like that look. Okay, so you can embellish that any way you want. Even if you, you could add even a little rusty star. We could do that. Or um, a little bell or whatever you kind of like to use around your home. You can definitely kind of keep the theme going. Um, I like that little star there, but before I put that star on there, let's check in to using a little sprig of Sweet Annie. Okay, it's just a dried I wish you could smell this. I've had this for months and it still smells as fragrant as the day I got it. <laughs> um, it's just, it, it is kind of fragile, um, but you can see it's just a dried herb. This stuff, if you grow it, it grows in the wild or you can grow it by seed as well. Um, it's just really just simple and primitive. It's used in a lot of primitive style decorating. Um, but I usually find it on Etsy, but I had uh, a sweet follower of mine, I don't know if she's watching today, um, send me a box of some Sweet Annie. I should have put this under one of these little fabric ties here. Let me see if I can tuck it up under there. There we go. Um, but she sent me a box of some. It was so nice of her. She is kind of experimenting with, you know, knowing when to cut it um, to dry and how to dry it. But um, it was used in a lot of um, sort of like as home fragrancing, like, you know, back in primitive times, um, it was used in a lot of general stores. They would hang it uh, in the general stores just to kind of have a pleasant, fragrant smell. Um, just like it just it was a primitive style air freshener. <laughs> That's basically what it was. So I've just kind of embellished that on the side. OK. Um, and then what I think I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a little bit of this Excelsior. I like the look of this, but I probably would like to rust up this little uh, silver plate at the top of on this candle. So what I'm going to do is just kind of hide it a little bit. And I did this on my Christmas lamp too. take a little bundle of Excelsior, which I have to stock up on some more of this stuff. I love it. I'm just going to take it and, and drape it right over the top, just like so. And it just gives a little extra added little touch of primitive country look. <laughs> just like that. All right. I'm trying to make sure. I probably could add a little bit more. I don't think I have any more. That's, that'll work for today. Okay. And I think that's all we have to it other than let's add our show. Oh, we got to add our little star. Which I unplugged my glue gun. Let's see if we have enough heat to get a little bit of glue out. A little bit of heat left, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. We'll see if that's enough. Let's stick that right there. Stars are huge, you guys, with primitive decorating as well. Stars, homespun, um, sheep, cheesecloth, anything with little candle lamps or candle lanterns. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> more and more and more. The more you can get of it, the, the more... Um, primitive you know the style will be so we'll just add this little lampshade to the top now you can see my little lampshade okay it's hanging it's hanging a little crooked so all I gotta do is twist it just a little bit and it kind of straightens itself out okay is that not a cute little lamp ah cute little lamp now I feel still think it's a little wonky <laughs> but I can um, tweak that after I get off the camera a little bit let's turn oh let's turn that light bulb back on i was like we got to turn it back on okay now if you wanted a smaller shorter you could use an even shorter candle light okay i've shown you guys before how to make really short ones 
I probably would rather have a super short one on this because to me, I feel like there might be a little too much of a gap from the top of the jar for this size. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to look at it. You know how when you make something, you kind of got to look at it for a little bit and see what kind of adjustments need to be made. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, that's kind of where I'm at with this one. Um, I, d I can't say that I'm completely satisfied with it. I've just kind of got to look at it <laughs> for a little bit. But let's plug in the night lights at the bottom. Now let's get a close up. Come on, lights, work with us here. There we go. It kind of wants to make it so bright. Um, but it's not that bright in person. But that's going to give you a soft glow and then a soft glow at the top. So you can have one or the other or both. You know, if you just want the bottom, turn the top one off. Okay. I think that's cute for every day. Now, how cute would this be sitting in a laundry room? I think that would be adorable. Like on a shelf in your laundry room? Yes, that would be precious. Um, or even a shelf in a bathroom. I can see that looking really cute. I mean, I think sometimes we kind of like to have a little nightlight in the bathroom. That would be a soft little glow of a nightlight in the bathroom. I think that would be so cute. But uh, anywhere you put it, you're going to have a touch of primitive and this wonderful, amazing smell of the Sweet Annie, if that's what you choose to use. So, hopefully I've given you another a fabulous jar idea <laughs> today. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know, I know I'm going to be live again next Friday, uh, January the 6th, for a fabulous uh, winter wonderland event and I'll be live again very soon but you know I always post it here on my Facebook page and if you're on my telegram channel which I totally forgot to send out a notification today you guys <laughs> I'm sorry I'll get back in my normal routine and kind of get the hang of things again it's like almost like starting all over again when you've taken like a week and a half two weeks off <laughs> we'll get back in the swing of things I've got more jar projects heading your way in January, we're having the Primitive Jelly Cupboard slash General Store Series. I can't wait to show you what I've got planned for that. And pretty soon, we'll be tying in some spring projects. So, come aboard. Check it out. And if you want my Telegram notification channel, uh, there is a link for that. Should be, a, there's a button down there at the bottom that you can push to find my links. It's on there somewhere. If not, you guys just let me know in the comments. <laughs> um what was the smell from oh the little sprig of sweet annie denise right there that little sprig of sweet annie is so fragrant it, it it's like i don't know it's just heaven to your nose <laughs> uh, thank you so much thank you all so much for joining me we have another creator coming up live right now over in the craft on the clock group y'all go check her out it's miss alex from the creative llama i'll say i'll see you soon bye guys